In this video, we're gonna cover 14 rapid fire sales tips, so let's get right into it. Sales tip number one is that you gotta break through what we call the indifference. And you do this by understanding the value that your product offers and the pain that it reduces. If the value and the pain are not strong enough, then you will end up in this area in the middle of the indifference. You need to expand the value or expand the pain to drive action to get deals done. Number two, you gotta get the prospect in what we call the buying zone. This is when the solution isn't so obvious that they're gonna try and implement it themselves, but it isn't so crazy and obnoxious that they don't understand the fix. If it's too complex, they're not in the buyer zone. If it's too simple, they'll just try and solve the problem themselves. So you've got to lean in from simple and complex into the buying zone. Again, if you want to get deals done fast. Number three, you've got to identify your ideal customer persona or otherwise known as your ICP. Defining a narrow and specific ICP is important because otherwise you're going to be trying to speak to lots of people. And so your message is going to be very broad and a very broad message is not going to elicit any response from the marketplace and you're not going to book any meetings on the back of it. Remember, your buyers are selfish. They only care what you can do for them, not what you could probably do for lots of somewhat similar people that may or may not be like them. Number four, once you've got your ideal customer persona, your ICP, you wanna refine it over time. To refine your ideal customer persona, you get all the people that go into your sales funnel, you find the one or two people that actually close, and then you look for more people like the individuals who closed, and you add them into the funnel moving forward. You consistently do this, and you'll narrow and focus your ICP over time. Number five, you've got to leverage discipline, not motivation. Most average salespeople rely on motivation to get stuff done. Over time, their motivation goes up and down. Some days they want to do stuff, sometimes they just don't want to do anything. High performing salespeople, on the other hand, rely on discipline. They do the same sale activities every single day and they get the job done. They are professionals. Number six, you've got to know your numbers. And that means creating what we call a one page plan. This is defining what you want, your income goal, your starting point, the goal that you want to get to at the end of the year and breaking this down to quarterly, monthly, weekly, and then daily goals so that you can leverage the discipline from the previous step to make those 10 calls, speak to the decision makers, do discovery calls, whatever it is, the sales activities that you need to do to hit, surpass, smash your quota. Number seven, you need to add new ICPs to your sales cadence week in, week out without fail. The sellers who add new ICPs to their cadences over time increase, rapidly increase the number of prospects that they're engaging with month in, month out. They create a snowball effect where you've just spoke to so many people by the end of the first, second and third quarter that undoubtedly you're going to get deals done on the back of it. Poor performers on the other hand randomly add a handful of prospects to a cadence every now and again when they feel like it, when they come across a good opportunity. And so they never get this snowball effect because it never builds up and builds momentum on top of itself. Number eight, use the scientific method. And this is much more simpler than what you're probably imagining. And it's so important in the modern B2B sales process. You use your experience to make a prediction. The buyer probably wants me to explain this. They want me to send them that. They want me to do this. You then experiment, you do it. If it works, you keep it in your cadence, you carry on doing it, moving forward. If it doesn't work, you remove it from your cadence and then don't do it again. You add it to your experience as something that doesn't work and so you can find more and more things that do over time. Number nine, use curiosity loops. Curiosity loops are dead simple. You post something in the subject line of an email, then in the body of the email, you build a bit of curiosity around it, but you don't give the payoff. You don't explain how to solve the problem in the email itself. The buyer has to book a call to get that information to start the process of solving the problems. That is a curiosity loop. You can use it in your conversations, cold emails, your sales cadence, across multiple emails and a whole bunch of other places as well to drive action and to book more meetings. Number 10, I want you to steal this. I want you to use this. This is the reality gap method. Again, you can use this in cold outreach. You can use this in your cold calls. You can use this in diagnosis calls as well. We're going to leverage the buyer's current reality we're then going to explain what their desired future reality looks like and then we're going to bridge the gap between the two. Current reality, bigger, brighter, bolder future reality and bridge the gap between the two. If you do this in your outreach, you're going to drive so much interest, you're going to book a ton of meetings on the back of it. 11, you've got to end all calls, every single call with a close. And this includes calls at the beginning, middle and end of the process as well. You can do this very simply by saying, hey, so it seems like you're a good fit to work with us. If we can solve X, will you commit to Y? Y can be get the paperwork done, introduce me to this person, sign the contracts, whatever it is. Make sure there's always a Y and make sure that you're always closing, closing, closing throughout the sales process. Number 12, take control of your sales conversations and steal this. I use this verbatim in every single diagnosis call that I have. Hey, we can get started if you like. You say this after a little bit of chit chat at the beginning of the call. The buyer will say, yes, please. So I go, great. The way these calls usually go is I'll ask a few questions, see if you're a good fit for what we do. If you are a good fit, I'll explain the product and then you can let me know if you want to move forward with this or not. 
does that make sense? Use this to take control of your conversations, position yourself as an expert, and close the next step of the process in a few simple lines. Number 13, create more urgency using, again, the reality gap method. Think of it like this, if there's not much of a gap between the buyer's current reality and their future reality, there's not gonna be any urgency. They're gonna go, okay, well, I'll get this done another time. It's priority number 27, I don't care. But if there's a big gap between where they are right now and where they really wanna to get to, then there's gonna be lots of urgency, and they're more likely to have you help them get from one side of this straight to the other. And number 14, something I wish I had done both in my sales career and as a small business owner as well, over at salesman.com, over invest in training. Remember, the only goal of working in your small business or in a sales role is to make more money. And you're gonna make more money quicker by investing into yourself and your skill set. At first, it costs you a little bit of money to do the learning. Then it costs you a little bit of time to implement it. But immediately at that point, things get easier as you start to refine the process. And then you're gonna get rich because you're gonna have success, which allows you to do more learning in the first instance. This is a feedback loop. This is a flywheel. Do this over and over and over. And you're gonna see rapid, rapid progressions in the amount of income that you're making every quarter. You're gonna spend X on additional training. It's gonna allow you to bring in Y new revenue as a salesperson, as a small business owner, which allows you to bring in Z money into your back pocket again at the end of every quarter, the end of every financial year. As long as the commission check, the bonus is more than the training cost, then you're making money. It's the most positive ROI that you can have investing into yourself, so get it. Done. And if you want more tips like this, completely for free, download our new book, Selling Made Simple, over at salesman.com forward slash book today. No catches, just throw your email address in there. We'll get you a free copy of the book. And if you enjoyed this video, why not click the video that's on the screen right now and continue making selling simple.